We are in Bolzano. This building is home to the Provincial Council, which is the Parliament of South Tyrol, its legislative body. This is where the political representatives elected by the people of South Tyrol meet. About 535,000 people live in the province. They can be divided into three main linguistic groups. 69% of the population speaks German, 26% Italian and 4.5% Latin. There are of course also people from many other countries of the world. South Tyrol is Italy's most northerly province and it is an autonomous province. This means it has autonomous administrative powers in many sectors. The reasons for this are historical. For over five centuries, from 1363 to 1918, Tyrol, at the time made up of Trentino, Alto Adige South Tyrol and modern-day Tyrol, was part of the Habsburg Empire. Many languages were spoken in this enormous multi-ethnic nation. In the wake of World War I, the historical Tyrol region was divided between Italy and Austria, with South Tyrol becoming part of Italy. This happened in 1919. In 1922, a totalitarian regime known as fascism came to power. In South Tyrol, now renamed Alto Adige, German was banned in public service. And in schools, Italian became the only official language. In 1923, the Ladins, who live in five valleys in the Dolomites, were divided among various provinces and regions. In the 1920s and 30s, the fascist regime built an enormous industrial zone in Bolzano, resulting in thousands of workers moving to the area, often from other northern Italian regions. As a result, the size of the Italian-speaking population grew quite substantially. Nineteen thirty-nine the year of the option agreement between Hitler and Mussolini. Under this agreement, the local population was forced to decide whether to remain in Alto Adige and become Italian, or move to Germany and leave their land. 1939-1945, World War II brought death, destruction and desperation. The end of this global conflict heralded a new era for Alto Adige. The foundations of the current autonomous province were created, a form of devolved governance which is a model for the coexistence of different ethnic groups in Europe. It all began in 1946. At the Paris Peace Conference, the victors decided that Alto Adige would remain part of Italy. At the same time, Italy and Austria signed the Paris Agreement that granted protection for the culture and language of the German-speaking minority. This agreement served as a basis for the first autonomy statute approved in 1948. However, the German-speaking population was unhappy the self-governance and legislative powers were almost entirely in the hands of the Italian majority in the Trentino Alto Adige region. Plus, the government failed to enact some of the basic provisions of the Paris Agreement, or did so very timidly and with major delays. The population grew unhappy and, in 1957, this discontent bubbled up into a major protest at Castel Firmiano. In the late 1950s, 
Austria bought the South Tyrol question before the United Nations. In the meantime, the population had grown increasingly restless and during the night between the 11th and the 12th of June 1961, the Sunday celebrating the Sacred Heart of Jesus, many electricity pylons were blown up in what became known as the Night of Fire. Following two UN resolutions, the governments of Austria and Italy, as well as representatives from South Tyrol, began intense negotiations. A package of legislative measures was agreed on and, following approval by the SVP party in 1969, the Second Autonomy Statute finally came into force in 1972. Over the next two decades, a specific commission worked out how to enact the new autonomy statute. In June 1992, Austria and Italy jointly informed the United Nations that the dispute was over and that the South Tyrol question had been resolved. The autonomy granted to South Tyrol allows it to legislate on and administer various sectors, including place names, landscape protection, spatial planning, handicrafts, nursery schooling, healthcare, fishing and hunting. The autonomous province governs through the provincial council, the provincial government and the president of the province. Provincial councillors are elected directly by the people of South Tyrol for a five-year term. Voters must be of age and entitled to vote. The council is made up of 35 councillors from the province's three official linguistic groups. Councillors also form various political groups according to their political affiliation. In the chamber, councillors speak Italian or German. Simultaneous interpretation is provided and all documents are drafted or translated into both languages. The Provincial Council has three main roles. First, it approves provincial laws on any area not falling within the exclusive competence of the state such as education, healthcare, use of public waters, trade and many other aspects of everyday life. Second, it acts as a check on the activities of the provincial government. For example, councillors can submit written questions or oral ones during question time on specific issues to the executive. The provincial council can also require the provincial government to take action in a specific area. This is done by councillors submitting motions. Third, the Provincial Council also elects the President of the province and the members of the Executive. In its first session after an election, the Council elects its President. For the first half of the legislative term, the President is elected among the German councillors. For the second half of the term, he or she is elected among the Italian ones. If the majority of one of the two linguistic groups resolves not to take the role, the Latin linguistic group takes it. The President represents the Provincial Council, convenes and chairs sessions and presides over who speaks in compliance with the Council's internal rules. 
the council can elect up to two vice presidents belonging to the two linguistic groups the president does not belong to. It also elects three councillors who, along with the president and vice president, form the office of the presidency. At least one of them must be a member of the opposition. The main duty of the office of the presidency is to assist the president in presiding over council sessions and administering the council. The provincial government is the executive body of South Tyrol. It consists of the president of the province, the three vice presidents, one from the German, one from the Italian and one from the Latin linguistic group, as well as of several provincial ministers. Their exact number is ratified by the provincial council at the start of the legislative term. The president of the province, elected in a secret ballot by an absolute majority from among the members of the provincial council, then allocates specific areas to the provincial ministers. The legislative committees, consisting of councillors, examine the draft bills before they are brought to the chamber. At the start of each legislative term, the Provincial Council establishes the number of committees, their remit and number of members. Draft bills can be put forward by councillors, the executive, the Council of Municipalities or even by ordinary citizens. For the latter, a specific number of signatures supporting the initiative is required. The legislative committees must examine draft bills within 90 days and they have the power to make amendments. Once the committees have completed their work, the draft bills are sent on to the Provincial Council, along with a report from the Commission, so they can be discussed in the Chamber. Any member of the Legislative Committee who does not agree with the content and or purpose of the bill may present a minority report. Council sessions are open to the public. Anyone can attend them. Live streaming is also provided. During the plenary sittings, various agenda items are discussed, such as all questions during question time, motions submitted to the provincial government, or draft bills. Just like other items, draft bills are put on the agenda of the provincial council before being discussed in the chamber. A debate on a draft bill begins with a general discussion in which each councillor is allowed to speak for 15 minutes. After the general discussion, the council examines single articles. Amendments to parts of the bill can be submitted up to 48 hours prior to the session. Finally, the draft bill is voted on. The approved bill is then published in the region's official gazette and generally takes effect 15 days later. If the Italian government feels the provincial law encroaches on the national remit, it has 60 days to ask the Constitutional Court to check its constitutionality. Similarly, the province can also turn to the Constitutional Court if it thinks that a national law conflicts with its autonomy. Various bodies are attached to the Council. The Public Services Ombudsman, who has to mediate in conflicts between citizens and the Public Service and includes the Anti-Discrimination Agency. The Ombudsman for Children, dealing with issues involving the rights and living standards of children and adolescents. 
the Gender Equality Advisor, who is committed to improving working conditions for women and combats gender discrimination. The Anti-Bullying Service and the Monitoring Committee on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities are also affiliated with the Gender Equality Advisor. The Communications Committee, which is the agency supervising the telecommunications sector at provincial level and represents the institution to turn to for disputes with telecommunications providers. The Council of Municipalities, that represents local authorities and releases an opinion on draft bills and acts concerning municipalities. The Monitoring Commission, a watchdog that checks whether the administrative action of the province and its institutions is legitimate, impartial and functions properly. We have now learned how the Council of the Autonomous Province of Bolzano works. Democracy really means self-governance by the people. This refers to a system of governance in which sovereignty is exercised by all citizens through voting. On the one hand, the people elect their political representatives. On the other hand, they can express themselves directly through grassroots consultations or referendums. It is vital that citizens are familiar with the various institutions and the way they are organised. Equally, it is of great importance that everyone participates in public life by keeping up to date and by trying to shape political decision making, both through using their right to vote and through active participation in other public initiatives. <laughs>